Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy. Welcome to episode 2 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this video, we'll be taking a look at some of the functional aspects of Logic 10. But first, I want to show you how you can set your key commands back to the default setting. Um, with all of the videos in this series, I'm going to be using the US key command preset. So if you want to make sure that all of your key commands match up with mine, you're going to want to do this. So the way you uh, initialize your key commands is you go up to Logic Pro 10, go down to Key Commands, and then we're going to go over to Edit, and you can hit Option K to get here as well. And then from this window, we're going to go to Options, and then we're going to go down to Initialize All Key Commands. What this does is it wipes all any uh, custom key commands that you might have made. Then we go back up to Options, and then we're going to find the Key Command Presets, and then go down and make sure that US is selected. So I'm going to be using all the US key commands for these videos. Next, let's go over the transport bar, which is up here on top, and the transport controls. In Logic 9, the transport, uh, the whole transport bar was actually located at the bottom of the screen. And I actually really like it at the top because it reminds me of Pro Tools and the way most other DAWs are laid out. You can actually fully customize the transport panel here. Uh, and mine is currently showing the uh, time and time code and beat clock, as well as the uh, locators, uh, the tempo, the end point of the session, my meter, my time signature, my division, and my MIDI input and output. Although this is the way that it's set up by default in Logic 9, you can actually change the transport panel by clicking on this little uh, cog looking icon here, and you can change the display mode of the transport panel. So you can view it in beats and project, beats and time, beats, time, and mine's currently on custom. So let's put it on beats and time. And in beats and time, it shows the playhead position in bars, beats, divisions, and ticks, as well as your playhead position in hours, minutes, seconds, frames, and subframes. By changing the display mode, we're actually clearing up a little bit of space for our transport controls on the left, as well as a few other editing parameters on the right that we'll come back to later. Next, let's go over our transport controls on the left here. A lot of them are pretty self-explanatory, others are not. Um, the very first one here is back to beginning. What it does is it sets the playhead back to the beginning, and so it goes back to measure one. But remember, in the previous video, I showed you that you can just hit return on your keyboard, and it essentially does the same thing. The next one is play from selection, which we'll come back to later. Um, you can also rewind and uh, jump forward, and basically what this, th this does is it bumps the playhead forward or backward by one measure. And a quick way to do this is to use the period and comma keys on your keyboard instead. So this just makes navigation a little bit easier because you can jump forward or backward uh, just by tapping period or comma, and you're jumping back and forward by one bar. Another way to do this is if you hold shift and hit comma or period, it'll jump ahead or back by eight bars at a time. You might have noticed that the stop button has now turned into a uh, back to beginning button. And the stop button does that when the playhead is uh, not at the beginning of the session. And remember that if the session is in playback, you can just hit spacebar to stop the playback. The next one up is the play button, and just remember to start playback, you can also hit spacebar. So let's try that. And then you can hit spacebar again to stop playback. Next up is the pause button, uh, which just pauses the session without stopping it. And then there's also a record button. The only button in the transport I haven't gone over yet is the play from selection button. And what this does is it allows you to click on a region and then start the playback from that region. But since we haven't selected anything, it just plays. So if we select a region and then hit play from selection, it starts the playback right there and will uh, play at that point. So it's just an easy way to uh, tell the playhead where you want it to start without having to actually drag it in place. All right, let's go over some of the main areas in Logic's interface. This whole window here is called the main window. It's also known as the arrange window in Logic 9. So if I say arrange area, arrange window, you know what I mean. Uh, another area that we went over in the previous video was the inspector, and that's this, this whole column here on the left side. 
Uh, and you can hide and show it by clicking on the little eye icon up here. Uh, and you can also hide and show it by hitting I on your keyboard. Another window we'll be using quite commonly in these videos is Logic Software Mixer. And the way you can get to the Mixer window is you go up to Window and then go down to Open Mixer. And then from, uh, well, you can also memorize the key command, Command 2. And that opens up Logic's Mixer, which shows all of the channel strips in our session. And you can also get to the main window from here by uh, hitting Command 1. One way to keep your session organized and sectionalized is to colorize uh, certain regions within the session. As you can see here, I've got a, a lot of different colors going on down here in the drums just to sectionalize each part of the, uh, of the song. So the way you colorize your regions in Logic is first you have to select the regions that you want to colorize. So I'll just select these guitar parts up here. And then you go up to the upper left corner and there's an icon right here. And this shows your toolbar. Now the toolbar used to be at the very top in Logic 9. It's uh, hidden in 10. And on the right side there's a colors icon that opens up our color palette. And then what you can do is just select the color you want and it changes the color of the, the regions that you selected. Another really useful feature in Logic is the cycle mode. And cycle mode is essentially the same thing as loop mode in Pro Tools. What it lets you do is it lets you select a range and then loop that range over and over again. So the way you can identify where your locators are for cycle mode is there'll be a grayed out area up in the ruler here, just like I showed you in the previous video. And when you click on that, it turns yellow and it becomes our cycle range. And so everything within that range will play and loop uh, continuously until uh, we press spacebar to stop the playback. So let's try it out. All right, so in that selection, it was a pretty long loop uh, loop range there. So let's pull the cycle range down to just uh, something smaller, like uh, four bars. We'll do four bars. And so when I hit play, we're just going to hear these four bars uh, looping continuously. All right, and uh, one thing that makes this uh, even easier is that there's actually a key command for cycle mode. All you do is you hit C on your keyboard and it'll toggle it on or off, so you don't have to actually go click on the cycle mode button. Another useful feature with cycle mode is uh, if you go up to navigate here and then go down to auto set locators, one of the options is enable auto set locators. And when you turn this on, what it does is it sets the cycle range to the length to the duration of whatever clip you've selected, whatever region you've selected. So if you just want to hear, say, this section right here, the locators will set their range to the length of the clip or the region that you've selected. So it's just a nice way to be able to kind of navigate through a song and uh, jump around and hear certain parts of the song without actually having to move the playhead to the correct point. So that wraps up most of the navigational aspects of Logic that I want to talk about today, some of which we'll come back to uh, in later videos. So that wraps up the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.